Welcome to the Parent Cafe Classroom, where parents get strategies for helping their children learn to read and read to learn, essentially learning how to tutor their children. If your child is currently in an elementary or middle school and is struggling with reading, this classroom is just for you. If your child merely needs support and you are using our Parents as Tutors series, this is just for you. If you are interested in preparing your child for kindergarten readiness, this class is definitely for you. Parents who use our Parent Cafe classroom along with our Parents as Tutors series are finding that their children are experiencing improved fluency and a higher level of comprehension. English language learners are also finding our classroom to be beneficial. Come join us in the Parent Cafe classroom and learn how to be your child's tutor. Parents, welcome to another session of Parent Cafe. The session today will be titled Reading Comprehension Through Questioning. Deepening Reading Comprehension Through Questioning. Why are we doing this? That's because so many parents are saying, hey, we purchase books for our children. Our children read fluently. However, the school is saying that the comprehension level is still low. What is it that we're not doing? Well, you're halfway there. Now you have them reading, at least they know words, but now they need to read for deeper meaning, deeper understanding. That's what comprehension is all about. So I am going to show you today how to question your children when they read a text in order to deepen their comprehension. But we'll start with the narrative text, the stories, mostly fictions, the narrative text. Because questioning them when they read nonfiction is a lot different than questioning for a narrative text. So get out your pens, get out your paper, and let's begin. Now, parents, I'm using Cinderella, this narrative text. But I want you to pay close attention to the, to the way I will be asking the questions. I need you to even write these questions down. Matter of fact, for those of you who have the Comprehension Intervention Full Guide book, these questions are in there. But I have them here on chart for those who do not have the, that book that comprehension intervention. All the questions we'll be using today are actually in the comprehension intervention. Yeah. So, let's say you bought your child a Cinderella narrative text for your child to read. Fun book, everybody knows it. Okay, how is it that I question my child to make sure my child has deep comprehension? The first thing you want to do is a picture walk. As you do a picture walk, showing the different pictures, you could start out asking the child to predict. So, what is this um, picture telling you? What do you think will happen next? That builds up interest and excitement. Okay. You have to pay attention to character analysis. The characters in the Cinderella story are who? Cinderella herself, her stepmother, her two stepsisters, they talked about her dad. Have your children list the characters in the book. Author's point of view, vocabulary, compare and contrast, cause and effect, mood and tone, conflict, author's purpose, connecting and themes. See, those are the umbrellas under which your questioning should occur. But I'm going to walk you through it. For example, character analysis. Here's how you do that. You ask your child, what words would you use to describe Cinderella's traits? What words would you use to describe Cinderella's traits? 
Your children should know how to do that because a lot of children like to call each other names. That's actually assigning traits to someone. And it's time for you to ask them, why would you say that Cinderella is a kind, loving young lady? Two traits, kind and loving. What is it that Cinderella did or said to make you give her that trait? So what words would you use to describe Cinderella's trait? So if they say, Cinderella was kind and loving, explain that. What's the proof? Which of Cinderella's thoughts and actions led you to select those character traits? How would you describe the stepsister's actions and behaviors? So when you're analyzing people, as in the characters in the book, you do want to analyze their actions and behaviors. So you have to ask your children these character analysis types of questions. And how did Cinderella change over time? Maybe she started out kind and loving, and then she changed into a different kind of person. Her trait changed. So you have to let them track people's actions and behaviors and pay attention to who they really are. What happened in the story that caused Cinderella to change? So even if you read, uh, have your child reading a book on Brownie the dog, I need you to change it out. What words would you use to describe um, Brownie's traits? I need you to use them. Just change it up to fit the book that you're using. So they have to analyze characters. These are the kind of things they do in school. So if you're purchasing books, question them in this way so that they get used to explaining these things. The child should also be able to tell you what the conflicts and the problems are in the story. Okay, are there several conflicts in the story or problems? What was the problem in the story? There were several problems. Cinderella was being mistreated, that was one. Cinderella lost her slippers, that was another one. Cinderella um, went to the ball and at some point she noticed that the clock, that it was leading up to 12 and so on. And also there are times when Cinderella was worrying within. So you have to teach your children that conflicts can be external, as in people against people. But it can also be internal where you can't make up your mind, you're depressed, you're confused. That's a problem, but it is an internal problem, internal conflict. So help your children to explain what the problem or problems are in the narrative that they're reading. Are those conflicts between persons and self or person and nature? person and society? Is it that one person is fighting with the other or the, the main character is sitting there confused and all of that? Those are all problems. Have them explain. Now when Cinderella did not want the prince to know that the slipper belonged to her, was she experiencing external or internal conflict? The conflict was with self with self. She had an internal conflict with self. It wasn't with someone else that she was fighting. So these are the ways that you question them for conflicts and problems. I'll walk over on this side because you also need to pay attention to the vocabulary in the actual text. You can ask explicitly Cinderella was very tired. What does the word tired mean? Why was Cinderella tired? They have to explain. What does the word tired mean in the following sentence? Those are some tired looking shoes. Is tired used in the same way in the Cinderella story? See, that's where you start to get into multiple meaning words. 
So the word tired has many meanings depending on the context in which it is used. So to say Cinderella was tired, tired means in that context. And now to say those are some tired looking shoes. Tired has a different meaning in that context. Multiple meaning words. Okay, what did the author mean when the author said at the stroke of midnight? Ask your children those questions. Do you see how that simple Cinderella story can deepen comprehension? Let's go on to mood and tone. Describe the tone Cinderella's stepmother used when talking to Cinderella. What kind of tone? Is it a harsh tone? Give your children the words that they can actually use to describe someone's tone. A lot of times parents say, don't use that tone with me. So children know what tone means. What was the mood in the house like? when the stepsisters were preparing for the ball. So a lot of times the mood is how you're feeling and the tone is how you say what you say. So have them ask them these things about mood and tone. And then what contributed to that mood? So parents, I want you to keep these questions. Keep these questions. Jot them down because whatever books you're reading, just change the character's name and use these questions. So you'll be questioning around character analysis, conflicts, problems, vocabulary, mood, and tone. So I'm going to give you a second to just think about all of this. Okay, so that was a lot, parents because we talked about how you should ask questions to make sure that character traits, character analysis is addressed, mood and tones, and all of that, prediction, all of that. So let's look at the other areas or umbrellas under which your, your actual questions should be created. And I'm giving you the questions. Connecting text. Conclusion, drawing conclusion, that is something that they're tested on. Their ability to draw conclusions and make inferences and to recognize the theme in a text. Cause and effect, compare and contrast. Let's look at how we're doing that with the Cinderella story. Because remember, your child read that, right? So now we're getting ready to question your child. Now, let's start with cause and effect. I'm walking over here. Cause and effect. Cause and effect type of questions. This is how you'd ask that. Why were Cinderella's stepsisters laughing when the prince wanted to try the slipper on Cinderella's feet? That's a cause and effect question. Why were Cinderella's stepsisters laughing when the prince wanted to try the slipper on Cinderella's feet. What caused Cinderella to lose her slipper? That's a cause and effect type of question. What caused Cinderella to leave the ball at the stroke of midnight? See how the comprehension deepens? Okay, what kind of questions would you ask to deepen their ability to answer comparing and contrasting type of questions. Was Cinderella's gown like her stepsister's gown? Or was Cinderella's gown similar to her stepsister's gowns? Explain. So if you ask a question that requires a yes or no answer, always follow it up with explain. So whatever answer they give you, they have to explain the rationale behind it. How was Cinderella's behavior similar or different than her stepsister's behavior? Explain. So that's a comparing, contrasting type of question or questions, because there are two of them. They're comparing and contrasting. This is all you did in comprehension. 
and also cause and effect kind of question, your children must be able to explain how one thing caused the other. That's comprehension. Let them pick it up in the Cinderella story. Now, let's come over to connecting text. As they read the Cinderella story, can they extend that to their experiences or to another book they read that's kind of similar to this, that conveyed the very same message? Can they make that connection? So, do Cinderella stepsisters remind you of anyone you know? See, it takes them back to another book that they read. So maybe your child read Snow White. So, the Cinder do Cinderella stepsisters remind you of anyone you know? How is the text version of the Cinderella story similar or different from the movie version? So even though you're asking them about similarities and differences, you're extending. Now you're having them to compare the actual story to the movie. They're extending, stretching. What are the similarities and differences between the Cinderella, Snow White, and Sleeping Beauty stories? Now they're comparing and contrasting and extending, going back, connecting to other texts that they've used, read. So they are connecting to other texts, they're connecting to the movies, and all of that. They're connecting this Cinderella character to other characters. Now, Conclusion and inference, this is where they are weakest. That's what we're finding in the data. Conclusion, inference, drawing a conclusion. Based on the stepsister's response to seeing the prince place a slipper on Cinderella's feet, what can you conclude or infer about the way the stepsisters felt? See? With the inferential type of questions, the ones in which they have to draw a conclusion, the answers are not directly stated, but there are hints, hints. Your child should be able to pick up those hints and draw some conclusion. It's just as though if I'm in my house and I hear the sirens going, I infer that there's an emergency somewhere. So make sure they're getting those inferential questions. Themes, let us focus on themes. Parents, children need to understand that when they're asked what is the theme, like as in what is the theme of the Cinderella story, what evidences support the theme, actually that question points to the message what message did the Cinderella story send? Was it a message of love, everybody loves each other? Was it a message of perseverance, even when you're being mistreated? So, your children should be able to explain what the theme is, the message that was um, threaded all throughout the narrative that they read. Let us move on now to the other areas. Give you a moment just to process this. So parents, we are down to three umbrellas under which your questions should be developed. So here we go. Author's point of view, author's purpose, predictions. Now, author's point of view the author is the person that's telling the story. So ask your child, is the author telling it from a first person point of view, a first person perspective, or a third person perspective? And how do you know? If the author is telling it from a first person perspective, the author is actually a part of the story and is actually using words like I and me. But if the author is telling it from a third person perspective, the author is um, actually talking about they and them. 
and they're talking about the others. So, was Cinderella the story's narrator as in the person telling the story? From which point of view was the Cinderella story told? What words did the narrator use to help you figure out the author's point of view? Next we go to author's purpose. Your children should be able to tell you whether or not the author wrote this book to entertain the reader or to inform the reader or to persuade the reader to do something. So, what was the author's purpose for writing the Cinderella story? Predictions. Now remember earlier on I showed you that your children, you could, could do a picture walk and would predict what would happen next. Well now the prediction needs to go a little deeper where do you think Cinderella's stepsister and stepmother will change their attitudes towards Cinderella? That's a yes, no answer. So then you say, explain. So whatever answer they give you, they must explain. Do you think Cinderella's stepsisters and stepmother will change their attitude towards Cinderella? That's a prediction that they could explain and tell you why. So parents, I've come to the end of this session. I'm hoping it is valuable. It was valuable for you. So I want you to actually write these questions down to help you formulate your questions as your children read narrative texts. You really have to ask deeper questions to deepen their comprehension. So I'm really hoping that you start questioning them in this manner. Go back to the books that they already read. Check to see if they're able to answer the questions under all these umbrellas that I showed you. And feel free to email me and let me know how it's working for you. In my next session, I'm going to teach you how to question them when they read nonfiction texts. Nonfiction texts. So until then, parents, remember to hit subscribe on the video. Hit subscribe so that when the next video comes out, it automatically alerts you that the video is ready for you. Come join us in the Parent Cafe Classroom and learn how to be your child's tutor. 